Well, hello and welcome to the photography podcast. Uh, it's uh, it's episode. I don't think you can see me. Yes, I can see. Sorry, yes, I can see. Yeah. Oh. I'll start again. <laughs> hello and welcome to the photography podcast. It's season four, episode twelve. Dave, episode twelve. I know you're keen to know that. Um, we've uh, before I tell you who's here. In fact, I will tell you who's here. Uh, there's five of us this week. Uh, one of one of whom is one of whom is is Owen <laughs> Owen Clark, uh, who's on as a guest. Hello, Owen. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks for having me on again. Nice. As I was just saying, it's been good two years. So, yeah. Two yeah, years. It's nice to come on. Thank you. Crazy. Yeah. I was just saying, two years seems like two at, least, years ago. at least one year and eight <laughs> months ago or something. It's mad. Um, uh, now, uh, before we go any further, Daz isn't here. Uh, he had to drop out last minute, unfortunately, because he forgot that it was, father, it was his father-in-law's birthday, like you do. Uh, and we've got no Adam and Stu, as we've already talked about. So, uh, but there's five of us here, uh, Dave, five of us this week. Um, and before we go on to anything else, I'd just like to drop through a few comments because um, we've had a few really nice comments from everyone. So, um, Dave, so um, we've, so Dave, we've had, we've had some comments. One from Keith Nisbet, and he said, geez, guys, be nice to Gary, especially Mr. Griff. He says, I need to know what episode it is in order to keep track of my viewing. Right? Okay. All right, and then Derek Nash says, "Mr. Griff, you may not you may not give an ass, but the rest of us are not so gifted. We need Gary's intros. Without him, we'd have no idea." Uh, let's have a look. Are there any more rep- uh, comments on here as well? Uh, yeah, Dave. Yeah, so Dave, owe you, yeah. owe you a dinner as well now? Yeah, yeah, yeah he does yeah. owe me a dinner. Yeah, there's also <laughs> one from Sheila Foster Hancock who says, "One of the f- <coughs> excuse me." <coughs> One of the funniest so far had me in stitches. Gary, you do a great job. Take no notice of Mr. G, Dave. Um, and I think there's there's one more that I just need to. Kevin YouTube, he says, hi, Gary, I listen to the show via Spotify. Now, this is a good point, Dave, right? I listen to the show via Spotify on my way to and from work. Um, he says, I'd like to request that you could... Oh, no, wait a minute. No, forget it. That wasn't about you. There was another one about you where someone was saying they listen to it. Anyway, they were saying they listen to it on the podcast and they don't know. They have no idea. They can't see how many people are here. So if I hadn't mentioned it this week, no one would know Owen was here until they twigged it about halfway into the episode when they went, oh, hang on a minute. Someone just said Owen. So so what you got to say about that, Dave? Hmm? Well, it's really simple. They're mistaking me for somebody who gives a shit. <laughs> Oh I must but be. however, I would say that was yet another dynamite intro. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, do, do you want to do what we've been up to this week? Do, do, do we want to talk about that? No. No? No. 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 Well, I do. No, well, let, Owen, let Owen say what he's been up to the last two years. Yeah, so Owen, <laughs> yeah, what, have you been not... up, what have you been up to in the last two years? <laughs> Not a lot of photography, nice. but that, I'll tell you that, definitely. <laughs> no, but I, I haven't really spoke about it on the, because I started doing videos again, I haven't really spoken about I am a father, a proud father. Oh, congratulations. Boy, oh, little, wow. Little boy. Yeah. Congratulations. He's 18 months, 18 months old, so yeah, he right. keeps, us, keeps us more than busy. Yeah. So I can imagine, I can imagine vlogging would have been quite a difficult pastime. Uh, although saying that, you get the early mornings without having to worry about waking up, wouldn't you? No, exactly. I'm already awake. Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just finding how to sneak out of the house is is, is the problem now. Oh, I'm sure many of us here can give you uh, tips on that. Um, well, I, I want to say what about what I've been up to this week. I've, I released a video, so there you go. You did? I did. Yeah, yeah. some really nice comments on it. I, I did yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Really? The, the, yeah. I should yeah. press the little bell thing, shouldn't I? I thought that yeah. was that was a nice comment from Mr. Livesey as well. It was yeah, a lovely was comment from Nick. Thank you very much, Nick. A, a, yeah. Amongst many, many others, and I will mm. get around to answering them. Uh, I was actually surprised at how many people uh, commented and, and were so positive and said, "Oh, welcome back!" And it's really, you know, it's really heartening to to know that that people miss you. So, thank you very much. Anyway, that was that's my week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, no one else wants to talk about that. So, well, shall we? Hello, you right, Dave? He's just, just watching, watching your video. this bozo on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tickle your bell end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
he's been drinking. He's been drinking, Jamie. We found I found it out. Oh he's, no! Yeah, he's oh, on the no. Shiraz. He's not one of those nights. Yeah, he's on the <laughs> Shiraz. So we're going to be in oh. trouble. We're going to be in big trouble. Go downhill from now on. I mean, literally, literally, he was the the main sort of source of all wisdom that we've got on the podcast tonight. No offense to the rest of you, <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> but but he's drinking, so it's it going yeah, to be he, carnage. It, his wisdom goes off in different directions when he drinks and, and it goes to the part of his brain that normally doesn't come to the forefront. And it's the bit that really winds everybody up and he doesn't yeah. give a shit. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Looking forward to that. Um, shall we, shall we talk about some more comments? Um, so we had some comments regarding food, which was quite interesting. And uh, someone said that, um, I can't remember actually, I'll find it. Um, Who's eating? Jamie. I've got some really crunchy jalapeno pretzel pieces that I've got specially for you to wind you up. <laughs> Very nice. Aldi they're from. Are they? Yeah. Oh, good. good. Oh, excellent. Really pleased. Anyone else got anything they're eating that they want to share? I had a curry before. I thought if, if we're not finishing till sort of half seven, eight, that's quite late to have dinner, isn't it? So yeah, mm. to yeah. curry this afternoon. Yeah, all nice. Yeah. I had a McDonald's this yeah. afternoon. Uh, picked one up on yeah. the way home from doing something, which was nice. I can I recommend the new, the new extra hot thing or something. Yes, the McSpicy with... Frank's Red Hot McSpicy. Very mm. nice. Is that what you had? I did. Yeah, I did. I had that mm. and some some chips and a, and a vanilla milkshake. Um, yeah, it was very nice. So if you um, nip off quickly uh, halfway through, we'll know why. No, I should be fine. I should be fine. No, we're, okay. not, we're not on Manic Moor, so I should be fine. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, comments. Uh, Keith Nisbet, uh, he said, as a Canadian, I'm loving your concoctions. Tuna beans, tuna beans and toast I love. That sacrificial chip, I totally get it. He said, and let me just say, the French have no need to worry about losing their gastronomy crown to any of us which is probably fair. Someone, I can't remember who it was, uh, and probably can't be bothered to look through, so I do apologise, um, said that they're going to try my uh, my crushed uh, crisps, uh, you know, suggestion to crisp up uh, your, your cheesy whatever it is on top of whatever you're cooking. So thanks very much for that. Um, uh, yeah, so that was quite interesting. Um, be interesting and there were loads of other comments. They will, they will survive. Trust me, it's a, it's a, it is a, a tip top meal. That I know, no one believes me, but hopefully, someone try it and and you'll you'll see. Um, someone said as well that no one mentioned Steve Wright in the Celebrity Death Club, so mm-hmm. that was sad, wasn't it? Really sad and unexpected. Yeah, he's jocking. Yeah, very sad. And there's someone else in the comments, but Sean Connery. And I'm pretty, I mean, I don't know whether it's tongue in cheek, but he died about three years ago, didn't he, Sean Connery? Yeah, he did. Yep. Yeah. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming that was just a, a joke, I think. Um, oh, and also, uh, I don't think it is Peter Crouch on The Masked Singer now. I'll listen to it again. I don't <laughs> think it is. I think it's that. You were was adamant that, last week. I was absolutely adamant. And everyone else says it's that. Alex Brooker, you know, off the off the last leg. Do you know the, Do you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, and I, I heard I heard him sing this 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 masked singer sing, and I went, oh, it's not Peter Crouch. And then when they said you're going to stay, he got really excited and jumped up and down, and one hand was flapping. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's Alex Brooker because his hands like withered away, isn't it? And I don't need to tell people that's mm. a bit, bit, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, so I think I got that wrong. So if you put any bets on, I'm really sorry. Anyway, shall we move on to a topic? Is everyone good to move on to a topic? Okay, uh, so we've got a topic here from uh, Colin Powell. Colin Powell is one of the guys who does the F7.1, by the way. They released a uh, podcast mm. yesterday, which was very interesting. Um, I watched inter- it this afternoon, actually. Yeah, well, yeah, it was, it yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. It was I, I, I quite enjoyed it, and they, they come up with some quite good points. So... Uh, Wasn't he the former American security sec- security bloke as well, Secretary of Defence? That's Colin yeah, Powell. Colin although, Powell. although, Colin Powell, although it's still Colin mm. Powell, isn't it? It's just they yeah. have to pronounce it differently to be different. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I remember him. Um, so 
he said, nice one. As you mentioned about finding or seeing competitions that other one others wouldn't notice, I'd be interested to know if you could only photograph landscapes within walking distance of a given location in the UK, excluding Scotland and overnight stops for a whole year, where would you centre yourself? Why is that excluding Scotland? It's rubbish. <laughs> well, that, that's that's his stipulation. I mean, I I'd, I would have gone straight away and said Glencoe, but um, it's not. So, walking distance, Jamie. Okay, I would go for probably somewhere in Devon. Uh, so that covers off photographically a really nice area. I've been down there a few times. We've been on holiday down there. So it gives me some opportunity to stroll to some lovely woodlands down there. You've got a lot of variety of woodlands down there. You've got the coastline. If I position myself in the right place, I can be walking distance to the coastline and some woodland. Um, the other benefit, of course, is that what that was one of the places we ever considered when we retired and the kids grew up and left home, we might move to. So it might satisfy me from a personal perspective and family perspective as well so that the family would be happy so that would probably be mine um i've i've always wanted to go down there at springtime actually down that area and photograph the woodlands at springtime because it's uh it's a really nice part of the world and when i've been down there i've never really photographed it properly i've only just done it for you know getting out for a couple of days while we've been on uh, on holiday so yeah that would be where i'd be down in devon somewhere don't know where, but I'd find a logistically nice place to live and uh, do my research. Okay, that'd be it. okay. Owen, what about you? A tough one, isn't it? It is a tough one. So you can only, so you can only walk to places and you can't stay overnight. Hmm. Um, I think it would probably have to be. I'm only going off places that I've I've been to as well, so I can't obviously can't comment on anywhere I've not been. But it would probably be quite a specific one of the 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 Bowdstone National Trust car park. I would park my van. Well, I don't have it anymore, but when I do in a couple of years, <laughs> I have another van. I would park there, and that would be my base in Borrowdale. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, just going off somewhere where I knew that would have a lot of rich diversity of landscapes. Obviously, you've got Kings Howe and, and all those areas around there. Then you've got the Borrowdale woodlands. So if I had to be very specific, yeah, it would probably be from places I know for yeah, that, that car park, because there's a lot of places you can get to from there, or walking. Yeah, walking up big, yeah. steep, flipping hills. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, you guys did Kings Howe recently, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, too recently. Did you, which side did you go up? Because I met Daz was messaging me, asking me which side to go up. We went up the side that didn't have the slippery stones. But we went back down the slippery stones. We came down yeah, the side okay. that had the slippery yeah. stones. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Which was the hell. south side. Came down the south side. Came down the hell side. <laughs> <laughs> as as Sam will funny. attest to. Or the fall over <laughs> side, as I like to call it. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. okay. That's a fantastic spot, though, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I love my seascapes and my coastal, but if if I had to pick somewhere that I could walk everywhere. Yeah, that would probably be be it for now. Okay, okay. What about you, Dave? I wouldn't move. You got what you just. <laughs> Good point. I can walk to Landwin from here. I can walk to the church in the sea. I can walk to various beaches, and if I position myself on some vantage points when there's snow on the hills, I can shoot them as well with a long lens. You'd be perfect, wouldn't that you? That was fun, yeah. wasn't it? That was really, really <laughs> uh, you know. Living, living the dream. Living yeah, the dream. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose, I mean, the bottom line is that I've already gone through this exercise because I thought about where I might like to live and I thought, oh, I'd like to live there. So, so I do. So I've already carried this exercise out about eight years ago and I, I wouldn't move. Okay. I guess the, the good thing about that, though, is you've actually done it. Rather than just talk about it, you've actually uh, done it and moved there. Mm. Oh, it's more luck than judgment, if I'm honest, because, you know, you, you never know exactly what house is going to become available and all that sort of thing. And I can't 
easily walk to the mountains from here, although it's not out of the question. I mean, 10, 12 miles puts me on the flank of Elidia Valr, which is a 3,000-foot peak. So, you know, uh, having walked to the base of it, I probably couldn't get to the summit, though. That's the only downside. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the, you've got to... You've got to look at, well, you know, 62 years old, so the, you have to factor that in, unfortunately. Plus, she's miles to a McDonald's as well. You walk past a couple on the way there, mate. Oh, it's okay. not a problem. Oh. Yeah. I might move there myself. Okay. <laughs> right. What about you then, Sam? What, what, where would you go? Well, of course, I've done exactly what Dave's done, and I, I already have done it. Um, but apparently I made the mistake of moving to Scotland, so I'm, I'd have to move yeah, again. Yeah, you can't have Scotland, I'm afraid. It says yeah. excluding <laughs> Scotland. It explicitly says excluding Scotland. Because I've I've already done exactly what Dave did. I've moved exactly to the place where I wouldn't ever want to move away from. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if I had to move, um, and it had to be in England, um, it's very tempting to say Lake District would be the obvious choice. But I'm going to... Avoid the Lake District because if you're if you're cutting out Scotland and saying I can't move to Scotland, you may as well say I can't move to the Lake District either, um, and it'd be a bit more interesting to choose somewhere else. And um, for me, it's probably between either Somerset, where I lived for a while, or um, uh, Northumberland, where I've also lived for a while. And probably because it's less fresh in my memory and I've not been there for a long time, I'd probably choose Northumberland. Um, and I actually, I, I lived in Annick when I was a young child um, for a few years. And I remember that area just being absolutely amazing. Um, just just around, that, you know, there's no mountains, but they have moorland, there's hills, um, with a beautiful river along there as well. And I just remember it being a really nice, really nice place. So I think I'd pro probably choose there. If I couldn't choose Scotland or the Lake District, um, yeah, that's probably where, where I'd go. So, Sam, are you sort of, even at your young age, are you already in your death house? Is that how you yeah. see it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Excellent. I'm, I'm never moving. See, I envy you. I wish I could have lived here when I was the age you're at now. I'd have lived here for 30 years already. Yeah. I mean, I've, yeah, I, don't, I don't want to brag, but I've got three Munros within walking distance from the house. I don't have to drive anywhere. Um, yeah, it's. It, it, yeah, this is this is I've got three pubs. For me. Yeah, I don't have any <laughs> pubs. So I definitely pubs don't have any McDonald's. Yeah. Got three pubs, two Indians, a Chinese, a Thai, <laughs> a burger place called the Shack. I'm doing all right. That's all in my village. Yeah, I'm not moving. I'm happy. Nothing to photograph, <laughs> but who cares? Um, yeah. No, I think if it would, I think if I could go anywhere, I've just been giving it a bit of thought. Uh, I reckon probably the car park at Surprise View in the peaks, not in the lakes. Because you've got Surprise View, you could walk to Padley Gorge, you could walk to Lawrence Field, you could walk to Bowl Hill Quarry. There's a fair bit around there. And if it's misty or the heather's out, it's quite nice. I was going to say you've got all, all seasons as well, haven't you there? Yeah, if it's autumn, you've yeah, got fantastic yeah. conditions. Mm -hmm. If it's winter, yeah. you could go up Surprise View. Yeah. Oh, wow, it's expensive that car park though. So you have to <laughs> make sure you've got enough cash <laughs> if you're going to stay there for a long time. I mean, you know, yeah, and they sh and they, I think it's open to doggers as well. Mm. I've got a feeling I've so I've heard. So it's not all no. bad then. Yeah, exactly. It's another reason to go. <laughs> can I can I change my? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh yeah, Padley Gorge and well the, around there. I think that'd be that'd be quite cool. Oh, although although, weirdly enough, there's another question on here which we could come on to, uh, where I can't remember who asked it, but they said, um, is there a place that you've been to that you really struggle to photograph, but you keep going back because you have a feeling that there must be a photograph there? And I'm a bit like that with Padley Gorge. Because Padley Gorge, I've seen some really good shots from there. But I've never got what I feel is a really good shot. Well, one of a tree, but I've never got what I would feel is a really good shot with all the waterfalls and, and you know, I think you've got to go maybe peak autumn to get the most out of it. But I've always struggled there. I've always struggled in Padley Gorge. So maybe I wouldn't go is it, there. Is it, is it a big area or is it quite long and thin? Obviously, it's a gorge. So did it spread out 
I think there's a lot just... you can explore there. I think if you could, so the gorge obviously is is where you've got all the cascades. But if you sort of head up the hills a bit, you've got an awful lot of old gnarly oaks and bits and pieces. Mm. But I've always I've always come at it from the the top end, so the surprise view car park end, because you could park down. There's a is it Grindle? Is it Grindlewald or Grindlefoot? Yeah, or? Grindlewald near the train station. You yeah, can you park could park at the train through, station and walk up, or you can. Where you can park up near the ice cream van. On, yeah, well, um, that, yeah, that Lawrence Field way. Yeah, that's where I normally park. Park at the top, right, and then come in that gate and then go that way. And I've, I guess maybe I've never walked far enough to really explore it all. Maybe there's more to it, but all the bits I've found, they're, they're okay. But there was always something, something not quite right mm. with it. You know, I guess actually, if you park there, you could walk to. Um, Wyoming Brook as well, because that's probably only about six miles away. Mm, so, yeah. yeah, and that's brilliant. I there. think the first time I went there, I parked at that Grindle or whatever it is, train station. And that that route in there, as soon as I walked in, that was like, it was a wow moment. It was like, wow, this is just beautiful, you know, the trees. And I think it was autumn time as well. And I, I, I do think that's slightly less explored and busy. Obviously, it's a busy place because it's a public footpath. But I think either coming down from some prize view or the, Ice cream van is where the busiest place is, so it's a lot more trodden around there. Um, a lot of people, but I think coming in from that you know, other side is better. Do, do you know, I've got, I've got Matt Oliver's work, Gary. Matt Oliver. Oh yeah, Matt Oliver. Yeah, mm. yeah. he does a lot around there, doesn't he? Yes, he's, he's a fantastic photographer. Get some inspiration from him, definitely. I, I've got a feeling it's Grindleford, not Grindelwald. I think that's from yeah, Harry Potter. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, I was is thinking that when you were saying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And and to be honest with you, it's criminal to uh, to get it wrong. I'll wait for everyone if anyone knows what that's about. Maybe someone will get that in the in the comments. It was it's not cr- somewhere I've explored really, Peak District, is it? Uh, but you do see some fantastic fantastic images, don't you? I, I really like Peak. Yeah. I, 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 I that was sort of like my really early vlogging sort of stomping ground, sort of the Roaches and Stanage Edge and uh surprise view although i've never been up surprise view i always called it surprise view but i was actually in lawrence field um there's lots and lots and and lumsdale falls is kind of peak district as well um and then you've got the derbyshire dales area that's not that far away it's quite there's an awful lot around there it's it's well worth going and, and having a look but i think the problem with it is when you go to the lakes or you go to snowdonia or you go to like glencoe or places like that there's lots and lots of things and they're all very close together. And it's almost like you could just stop and go, oh, and, ooh, and, ooh, and but when you go to the Peak District, they're very prescribed locations. It's, it's you know, you can drive quite a distance with not a lot going on. No, stuff going on, but not a lot in terms of real photography going on. And then you'll hit like Winnett's Pass or Mam Tour or whatever. And you go, oh, that's really good. But then you can drive another 20 miles and there's not a lot going on until you hit the next one. So it's not like the lakes or where there's something everywhere and you can just pull in and, and you know, oh, there's a great view there and there's a great view there. It's a bit more spread out, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But it'd be some nice stuff. So hopefully, Colin, we've answered your question. That was quite quick. That was a bit quick. Does anyone feel that was a bit quick? Does anyone want to expand on where they... Dave, do you want to talk longer about your house or do you want to, you know, is there any... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I've never been to the the peaks with a camera. Have I you must not? admit. No, because I'd be driving past some far better locations to get there. Uh but I I I can I can understand the appeal if you live kind of where you live. I get that. Yeah. I mean it, it, it's true that it's not spectacular, but it's it has a charm of its own the peaks. There's you know, you don't. I don't think it's anywhere that you go in the peaks and you go, "Wow, wow, mm. this is you know mm. jaw dropping." But there are some places that are, are are really nice and sort of you know, like for instance, Three Shires Head. That's lovely, you know, busy, but but lovely, a lovely place to go and photograph. Or or at Mount Tour is is lovely, but it's not that sort of real stunning, you know, mat, sort of mouth drop moment where you're like oh my god you know look at where i am like a lot like where where you are or you are sam for instance yeah 
It sort of proves that what a great ph- photographer Matt Oliver is then, because some of his work I just look at. And absolutely, just think yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it, you know, it, it's the skill, isn't it, of the photographer, I guess. Uh, Which actually was one of the questions, wasn't it? I think it was. Or maybe yeah. that could link to that later. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Sam, I, was, I didn't mean to Well, I was, I was going to say, I, I would probably actually disagree with you, Gary, about it being sort of 20 miles between different locations in, in the Peak District as well. Um, not that I've photographed just an awful lot, but I remember when I was about 16 or so, I did my Duke of Edinburgh there. So we spent three days walking around, it would have been mainly, um, I think we started along Stanage Edge and then we went around to the Lady Bower. So it was all within walking distance, lots of different places and i just remember it being absolutely stunning um and you've got quite a lot of because you've got woodland i mean you've got rivers you've got the stanage edge rocks yeah. as well you've got the reservoirs and there's it. lots of wildlife as well so there's great dipper locations they have mountain hares mm-hmm. in the peak district too um so i'd say there's quite a lot of stuff concentrated <laughs> in there um in fact i might even change my decision mm-hmm. from being based in Northumberland <laughs> to being based in in the middle of the Peak District. So actually, I think I think there is actually quite a lot going on there and on offer for all sorts of genres of photography as well. I, I, I think though, Sam, what you've got to remember is that a mile for you is not the same as a mile for me. Oh, that's true. So because I'm because I'm unfit, <laughs> a, about half a mile is the equivalent of of your mile. Yeah, so, my mile so, involves yeah, going so, up so a hill and back down yeah. it again as well. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm talking about accessible, you know, fat bastard locations essentially. So, <laughs> and there's less of those about. I tell you what, I tell you what as well. Um, Asin, I've got to go to Asin. I've got, look, look, watching Stuart's video, what a place that is. I mean, I know he had the most amazing conditions, but. It just looks gorgeous. Everything like um, what? What are those mountains? What's that mountain called? Stack Stack Polly and Stack Polly, Sullivan, and Sul- Sullivan. Sullivan. Yep. Cool yeah, Cornwall. They look Canis. amazing. Yeah. They look absolutely amazing. I mean, I know you went there as well because I, I I did. Um, I've, I've watched your video on it as well, but looks absolutely amazing. I've got to go. I don't know. how I'm going to get there. It's a ten and a half hour drive, but i've got to go 600 miles you can't stay overnight either you got to do it in one day oh no i'm not doing i'm not, I'm not <laughs> colin i'm sorry not not I'm, it's out of the question for us it mate but oh can we can we go can we do a podcast tour well you're coming you're coming up to see can me I'd at love some to stage, go. aren't you so it's, yeah, it's exactly. only an hour so, it's an hour and a half for me so maybe just so why don't we do that what yeah. <clears throat> because if if I, I know we're like let's oh i'll tell you what let's plan a tour on live on air but um <laughs> I could take you, Jamie, and Daz, and we could split the petrol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm well up for it. I've I'll always you, wanted to go that area. Pick you really up and away as well, if you want, Dave. Yeah, okay. Oh, and you're welcome to come along. Obviously, <laughs> I was going to say I'm calling dibs on this trip yeah. if I'm on yeah. if I'm on this episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's do, let's let's do it. Let's try and arrange something because I've got to go there. I've, I've just I've just got to go there. That's it. End of story. I've I've got a question. Kind okay. of just backtracking a bit. Okay. What what do they do now for Duke of Edinburgh? Obviously, it doesn't exist anymore. So what do they do? Duke of York. You could do that, Gary. I'm not doing the Duke of York. <laughs> not not with what that involves. Not as well. No, I mean, I'm assuming that, you know, there must be some equivalent still. Uh, has anybody else done it out of us? No. I didn't. Well, I say I say I did it. I didn't actually do it. I um, what I put on my CV when I was leaving school is I participated in it because I I basically I did the camping trips and then I didn't bother doing the rest of it. So, um, oh, yeah. I see. So I was never actually officially awarded. Did did, they, did did they were they wondering who this this lad was <laughs> tagging along behind? No, I was I was Who's I was he? signed. What was he signed, doing here? I was signed up to it. I was supposed to do all the volunteering and things. I just I couldn't really be bothered. I, I literally just wanted to do it for the hiking and the camping. So. Yeah, that sounds very right sensible. Did any of you? Did any of you guys when you were? That's the Duke of Sussex, isn't it? That one. <laughs> What's that? Get, getting pissed and dressing up like a Nazi. That's the one, yeah. Um, did, did any of you guys, when you were younger, do residential with your school, like a residential trip? Yeah. 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 Where did Several. You, 
we, we I did. I, I have to. I, I just. It just reminded me of a really funny story. I went. We went to uh, Thetford Forest. Shut up. My phone. For God's sake. Come. Um, we went to Thetford Forest, um, and we had to camp out. Obviously, they had all these like big, you know, the big tents in the in the thing, and we did like orienteering and you know trying to find this and trying to do that and build. We had to build a raft, you know, out of sort of you know those great big barrels and some sticks and stuff. But one of the days we did canoeing, right? And uh, like, which which was fun. I mean, I, I was a I was a chubby boy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so getting in and out of the canoe was a bit of a stretch. Um, but we, we were canoeing down this river in, in I, I guess it was in Thetford Forest. I don't know what the river was there, but we were canoeing, canoeing down this river and, and they, they, the instructor says, right, everyone, everyone stop. And he, he got, went over to the bank where there's this like a uh, little jetty. And he's like, right, I want you all to pull your canoes together. So grab the canoe either side of you and pull it in. Right. So we had this sort of, big long line of canoes all like this with a Canadian kayak boat, you know, a Canadian boat, is that what they were called? The bigger boats with the, like that, you know, down the end. He says, right, what I want you to do one by one is get out of your canoe and run across to the end of the canoes to the jetty and then run back across the end of the canoes into the Canadian boat and then run back and get in your canoe. So the first person did it, you know, got out like little athletic little bastard, you know, and of course, ran back and got in the canoe, back in the canoe. Anyway, it came to my turn, right? I was about, I was about, I don't know, probably about sixth or something. So I got out of the canoe and I ran across to the jetty and I ran back in and sank the Canadian boat. <laughs> <laughs> at which point, and, and it, oh, by the way, you had to hand in your oars. So all your oars had been handed in because you couldn't, because you're holding on, so no one had an oar. Sank the Canadian boat, jumped out of it, laid on my stomach across three canoes. They all died laughing, let go of the other ones, and we just floated off down the river. And the instructor's going off. And, oh, so he's like paddling like mad trying to catch up with us. And I'm just laying there like, like a beach whale across the front of these three canoes as we floated down the river being attacked by like swans. Oh, happy days. Happy days. Anyway, that was just a that's just a little fun story about orienteering. But I didn't nice have, memory. Yeah, a happy days. Yeah, nice memory. Yeah, <laughs> nice memory. Oh dear. Uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, Colin, <laughs> hope that's answered your question then a bit more. Um, so let's move on to another one. So are we all good? Okay. So let's move on to another topic now. I think this is one of yours, Sam. I could be wrong. Oh no! Don't what do one of mine. What career did you? Oh, God. What career yeah, why Jamie will hate it? Don't do that, Gary. <laughs> yeah. I'm, okay, I'm, with, right, I'll tell you what I'm with Jamie on that one. It's rubbish. I'll move on to a topic from Jamie. I never here. said that one was rubbish. Oh, I think it's rubbish. Well, you can do I it can if move, you want to. I can move on to what? Well, let's do one from Jamie, because Jamie's put one in here. I haven't um, put one in, have I? Right? Which, which, yeah, you have, yeah. yeah, yeah so. No, I haven't. You've made this you, one up, no, haven't you? You've made it up. I'm going to just... <laughs> Deny this one is mine completely. Go on then. No, I was going to say, <laughs> which is your favourite cheeky girl and why? Uh, all right. So do we want to do this one about what career did you want to do when you were as a child? Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, oh, okay. Right. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll start that whole fucking bit again then. Uh, right, right. <laughs> Got to leave that in. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's, the th- that's the clickbait title. Yeah, yeah what's that? <laughs> I'll leave this whole, yeah. I've got to do that whole in bit again or something, <laughs> whatever it was you just said. Oh, by the way, while we're on the topic, because do you know what? We will leave that bit in. How, how do you guys feel about swearing? Um, I can't I, get enough of it. No, no, I don't mean you. I mean, I oh. mean you. I mean you, uh, the viewer, the listener, because I cut out all the F words. Um, and That's I'm why not... it's only an hour and a half, because we've recorded yeah. three hours of swearing. <laughs> No, I'm just like, it's just a pain in the ass cutting it out. And I don't cut out like shit or bastard or any of those. So so do you cut out f***? Yeah, f***. f- gone. I can't keep f- What about c***? Oh, no, that's definitely gone, no. Never that's keep- the most versatile word in the world. Yeah. You can't really keep that one. <laughs> but that that one, no, I can't, I can't, I can't have um, Does it demonetise you? 
Can you have ad, ads and things if you've if you've got those words? In? Well, I think Daz was saying that after a certain amount of time, you can say it. But <laughs> but if you say you just have to say it fifty times yeah, and then it's all right. No, but if you if you went if you if you went so say for instance you went hello, f- welcome to the but then the money your money's gone. That's it. You can forget it. It's gone. But you can, oh, we could like tell our audience to come and watch us on Pornhub instead or something. <laughs> Oh, who'd want to watch us on Pornhub? Seriously. <laughs> who'd want to watch that? I mean... Oh, I That's a good what... question then. Your, your porn name. That's for another week, maybe oh. when, when Daz is yeah, back. Yeah. Your, your that's, porn star that, name. That's, that's a very good, good one. Oh, yeah. I tell you yeah. what, why don't we set up a no- podcast only fans? <laughs> <laughs> that might work. Because someone, someone actually put on the comments about, oh, I think... Uh, I'm not sure who it was, so I don't want to get the wrong person. But someone put on the comments, "Why don't we? Why don't we do a, a membership, and then we can do like uh, extra podcasts and outtakes and 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 they actually said product reviews. I don't think so. I don't. I mean, no. Um, I'll tell you why actually, because a I don't like. I don't think it would be fair to charge for this. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And B, the other thing is we're only on like five months of the year. So you'd be paying membership for nothing for those five months and then even less in the seven that we're not here. So so um yeah, I don't I don't think we'll do that. Uh only fans though, we'll 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 talk, we'll talk offline. Um You could do like won't. a tip jar like you would in a pub, like for the for the bit like a beer money one or something to, to fund the pub. We've got a thanks yeah. button. Yeah, thanks yeah, for bringing yeah. that up actually. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that. it's covered in cobwebs <laughs> and dead wasps. <laughs> yeah. We met no awesome. we mentioned it. We mentioned it on one podcast and got a, a little chunk of money actually. I mean Oh yeah, of, did we? Of, That's yeah. first we've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> we did get a little bit of money, yeah, but some of it was from you guys. It was like what what what, what? anyway. Um yeah, but so yeah. Thanks for mentioning the thanks button. We do have a thanks button down below. <laughs> you know, just just so as you know, um, you know, for struggling content creators um, and editors. Ad- Adam Gibbs will be back on next week as well. So yeah. that will. That'll... <laughs> oh no, Adam's away for no no he, no. Sorry, yeah, he might be back. We don't know yet. Just keep watching. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. We talked about this last week about money, and you were like a little bit. I know. I noticed you guys getting a bit like, "Oh, oh, how much you making on that?" Do you know, I worked it out. Yeah. Do you know how much? Do you know how much we make? About five pound an episode. Five pound an episode, and then I worked out how many hours it takes me to edit this thing, uh, which means I'm on about seventy five p an hour. I'm getting less than some poor, you know, some poor kid in a in a Chinese sweatshop. How much is that much spicy? meal making it large is it about five it's, quid someone? it's more than five quid it's about i think oh. it's about eight quid so it's a it's a good episode and a half before i can even afford the one of them rather than the large yeah. i might have to have an extra value or a happy meal you know it's so bad terrible yeah so you, thanks buttons down there though if anyone's interested <laughs> um so uh well, let's move on to this then this is from i think this is from you sam isn't it uh, and, and the, the yeah. question is, what career did you want to do when you were a child? Um, and I think we'll start this one with, let's start this one with Dave. Okay. Um, I, I actually had two, really, I suppose. Initially, it was I wanted to be a policeman. But in those days, you had to be a certain height, and it became very apparent I wasn't going to make it. So that that was that bridge burned. Um, And then I was down to go to university to study marine biology, oceanography, that sort of thing. And my aunt, who was a scientist, said to me, I was about 15 years old, what are you going to do with your life? And I said, oh, I'm going to go to university and do marine biology. She said, oh, that's that's good. There's no money in it. I went, oh. So I didn't. (laughs) I thought bollocks to that. Um, so yeah, that that it was either a policeman or Jacques Cousteau, or or a, an underwater policeman. You could have done. 
Yeah, yeah. There's lots of them you'd around, a, Gary. <laughs> you'd have had a good pension if you'd been a policeman when you were. Well, yes, I'd have already been retired about, yeah, I'd have been retired about 15 years. I'd have a drinking problem. Oh, hang on a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did like the idea of sort of, you know, the Sweeney I could or, or Starsky and Hutch. I could see myself sliding across the bonnet of a Ford Escort, parting a couple of drunken knobheads in Cardiff and saying, you're Nick Sunshine. You're Nick Sunshine. That, <laughs> that, that sort of thing. <laughs> Or you. But I was, ne- I was never going to make the height. And later in life, when they decided it didn't matter how tall you were, I was particularly gutted because by then I was too old. <laughs> now they'll let anyone in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> my, my old man's a retired policeman. He's not, what you say, you're mid-60s, eh, Dave? Yeah. He's a, little bit, he's a little bit older than you. So, yeah, he's, he's a retired policeman. He's, yeah, he's, he's done well out of it. He's doing well. He enjoyed it, but he always said to us growing up, don't ever become a policeman. He could see it just going downhill mm. with, you know, yeah. Because I, when I was, well, so if, if I go, if you finished, Dave, I was going to say, because mine would have been a policeman when I was little. But can you imagine being a policeman today? <laughs> I would still be a policeman. I think it would be one of the, the the most difficult, horrible, un, you know, unforgiving jobs in the world right now. I'm you can't like, arrest anyone, can you? you just yeah. got to say, stop being naughty. If you want to film me while you beat me up, then please make sure that you put it on, you know. You can't yeah. do anything as a policeman, can you? you? Your hands are tied now. You've got to, you've got to be nice exactly. to everyone and, and, and not actually arrest anybody for being bad. So, and then get shouted at and told off for not arresting anyone. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't win, can you? Yeah, no. Yeah. No. One thing that I always found kind of bizarre was whenever there's a, an incident of any sort on the news or what have you, There'll, there'll be some police tape and there'll be a, a copper on the door or something. But then there'll be about at least 20 others just sort of standing around. Meanwhile, if you've been burgled, they have got anyone they can send along to to discuss it with you. They, they, they you know, they're, they're kind of the, the equivalent of roadworks where one guy's digging and six guys are watching. Yeah. They're, they're guarding the tape, Dave. They're making sure the tape don't get nicked. <laughs> probably probably find that four of them are inclusion inclusion officers making sure that nothing no one's being discriminated against <laughs> whilst the tape's up and then the other three are hr to make sure the inclusion officers are doing their job and there's probably an auditor in there as well oh i'm getting cynical i'm getting cynical in my old age i really am the you're problem, problem is you're not far off. <laughs> no, you're not, you're not far yeah. off. Yeah, exactly. Mm, exactly. <laughs> uh, so two, we've got two for policemen, stroke machine, uh, a marine biologist. What about you, Sam? What did you want to be? Yeah, well, actually, funny. Well, I did go through a long phase of wanting to be a teenage mutant ninja turtle, but once I grew out of... <laughs> <laughs> Can we can we clarify the age where this this age bracket was? Yeah, about twenty five to twenty eight. Last week, but, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's what I, was, I was hoping. Yeah, but once once I got through that stage, actually very similar to to Dave, I wanted to be a marine biologist, um, and I I kind of used to swing between wanting to be a marine biologist or an entomologist, um, and I was one of those kids who used to have lots of aquariums set up in my bedroom, and it was all full of caterpillars and spiders and I had a little aquarium in the corner that was a pond so it had all kinds of pond life swimming about in it um I used to collect bones and dead insects and I had a little collection tray and all of that sort of thing so I was one of those kids very sort of Gerald Durrell type thing and um yeah so actually that's that's what I wanted to do for years and years and I did actually end up going to university to study zoology um and then ended up halfway through university deciding I wanted to be a, a musician. So I gave up on the degree basically. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to do when I was, when I was a kid for, for years and years and years. Um, Reminded me of my time with, with, with insects as a kid, I learned how to, um, how to use a magnifying glass in the summer to, uh, to yes. kill as many insects as you can. Yes. <laughs> Just ah, to fry so you're them. Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> that was great fun, that was <laughs> I used to pull the legs off daddy long legs until they only had one and just watch them go round and round in a circle <laughs> oh Jesus yeah, H- 
Christ on a bike. Mm. Well, you're right, Dave. Yeah. I, I just I don't I don't understand that nasty cruelty that people do. They're still living creatures. I, I, if I did that, I wouldn't admit to it in later in life. <laughs> I'll cut that bit then. Not Jamie's bit. I'll keep that bit in. Jamie, you bastard. <laughs> You're living creatures, Jamie. How could you do such a thing? Unbelievable. What did you want to be again, Jamie? A mass murderer? Or <laughs> yeah. Entomologist. Yeah. <laughs> I had I had two as well, and, and mine was, was a similar to, to the policeman originally. It was a, it was a postman. Um, for some weird reason, I wanted not to be really a postman. Not really that similar. They're not that because well, the man at the end. They are, they policeman, postman, nurse. What? Doctor, they just a man at the know, end. All... One, one solves crimes, the other <laughs> delivers mail. <laughs> yeah, they're not I think same. it was the I, I think it was the uh, the thought of delivering mail in the middle of winter in shorts in the fens was probably not the best thing to do. So, so the one I've probably settled on that clearly never happened and it never was going to happen is I always wanted to be a weatherman. I think I just enjoyed, I enjoyed the, uh, I always, because my parents obviously owned and lived, we worked on an arable farm. So the weather, we really drove whether mum and dad were going to ever make any money <clears throat> because, you know, if we had a bad winter and a bad summer, or whatever, it affect the crop. So the weather was always top of the list when it comes to watching, watching the telly, we'd always have the weather on. And that always got me interested in, you know, well, what is a, cold front and a warm front do and you know all the rest of it so I started to get a little bit nerdy with it and yeah I, it was something I wanted to explore and probably today <clears throat> I've still got the same nerdy interest in it when but obviously it's a different different driver now now it's looking at you know what the weather's going to be like to go out and take pictures so um so I never did it for a living but I've always kept an interest in uh, in meteorologists Okay. It's fascinating stuff, isn't it? You know, like if you've got those apps like Windy and things like that, where you can just look around the whole world and just you can see back in time, forward in time, and where the weather that we've got approaching, where it's coming from, how it's forming. It is, it is fascinating yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I think it? it's really enjoyable. I watch the, um, the, the deep dives on the Met Office YouTube channel each week where they do a sort of forecast 15 days in ahead and they go into a lot of real detail about SSWs and which sudden stratospheric warnings, which are just about to happen. All these things that affect our weather. It's uh, yeah, it's fascinating stuff. You have to link so it you're to nodding me. off. I'd, I'd be interested in. I know I'd be interested in watching that. Uh, yeah. da Darren, Darren, if you're watching, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate it. Actually, well, I've got a quick question for Jamie. Actually, how I've, I've completely forgot because I've not been out for a couple of weeks. Just not a chance. The <clears throat> weather app you recommended. Because it's a free yeah. trial, isn't it? So I've been saving it until I want to actually use it. So how's yeah, that? Yeah, I've, I've subscribed to the free trial. This is that viewfinder that I talked about a couple of weeks ago. And uh, yeah, I've subscribed. I've been watching it. The trouble is, it tells you an alert. It gives you an alert every every day if there's going to be conditions around the area that you set the perimeter to to look at. And it basically looks at golden skies, sunrise, sunsets, and fog and stuff like that. And that was the real main reason I thought it'd be interesting. But it's more or less alerted me every day since I've had it that there's something going on. <laughs> so I think it's covering its bases quite easily by saying, so, yeah, there'll be there'll be sunrise tomorrow that'll be fantastic. And you look out the window and it's not. But I think it's just it's it's not great, if I'm honest. Even today I looked at it because there's fog predict well, there was fog predicted at the weekend where we are. And I looked yeah, at it and yeah. it's exactly the same as windy. It gives you exactly the same coverage of cloud of where the fog line is going to be. So okay. I don't think it's well, probably worth the investment, if I'm honest. Well, that's that's another one with the windy one, actually, because I paid for the premium. It's only like 15 quid a year or something like that on the windy, because it said it gave you loads more detail. And I was like, actually, for, for what I need, it doesn't give me any more detail. So if anyone's got windy and thinking about it, it you, you don't get any more, <laughs> any got, more for your yeah. money. <laughs> I've, got, yeah. I've got windy. Yeah. But I think that's the McDonald's earlier. <laughs> <laughs> But oh my god, has it not been so frustrating now this way this winter? It's been like the worst winter, the worst wet, horrible, miserable winter yeah. out East Anglia way, isn't it? We I can't remember last time. It was yeah, it's awful. Yeah, just, I know. And even not, even now, that fog not. that was predicted doesn't look as though it's going to be around yeah, our way now. Be, anyway, it's supposed so. to be foggy tomorrow morning. Yeah. I, I saw. Yeah, yeah but I not round. It might be where you are actually, but not up where we are. No. no. 
anyway, anyway, you know, I haven't <laughs> back back to me because you know I haven't had a chance to tell everybody you know what I wanted to do as a kid. I did want to say quickly, and I'm really hoping Sam pull through on me here, Sam. Right? Mm. Okay. Yep. You were talking about being a weatherman, yeah? I want Sam to finish this sentence, yeah? John Ketley is a weatherman. Come on. A weatherman, a weatherman. Thank so you. Is Michael Fish. So yes, is. thank you. <clears throat> Excellent. Brilliant. I thought it'd be Sam, and it turns out it's you Sorry. two jokers. Unbelievable. Thomas <laughs> uh, Thomas so, Schaffernaffer is a, is, is, a, is a weatherman. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find, Gary, that Wincy it's Willis. slightly older than you were w- working on your assumption. There. Yeah, yeah, I thought so, but I just thought he was a bit alternative, so I thought he might have he might have got that one. Sorry, Gary, um, I've let you down. Anyway, you have let me down. You're off. You're off the podcast. Oh, and are you free next week? <laughs> I mean, I was going to say, I was going to yeah. say, this this the first time that I've seen Owen and Sam in the same room. So they are different people. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think because obviously, Gary, you're going to share what what you were hoping to do with your life eventually. Um, but, but yes, <laughs> but I also would be interested to know from the others, given what we now all do, a how did we drift into that, and b are we happy with that choice? Just what, out jo- of interest, because jobs, jobs none of us have come close to what we said we were going to do. Yeah, okay. Well, I tell you what, I'll, I'll do my bit, and then we'll go back round because that's a very good question there, Dave. Thanks for that. That is a good question. Um, I wanted to be a spaceman, um, <laughs> and then, and then, for, and then for a little while, I wanted to be a footballer. Oh, I used to play football. I was an only child. Well, I wasn't an only child. This is well, I was an only child. I know this sounds stupid. I was an only child, and then my dad remarried, and then I was a, I was then in a in a big family. But when I was an only child for that period of time, I used to play football in my back garden. And I used to have a, 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 a not a massive bit of grass, but like a bit of grass with a sort of very low fence at one end and a very low fence at the other. And I'd attack one end being like, I don't know, England, and then I'd attack the other end being West Germany. And, and I'd always make sure that England scored more goals. But I wanted to be a footballer. And then after that, after I realised that I couldn't do any of those things, uh, I decided that I wanted to be a musician uh, because I really wanted to play music. This is when I was about sort of 14, 15. I used to hang around with my mates. We used to go up into their bedroom, and one of my mates had a, had a guitar, had an acoustic guitar with one string. <laughs> <laughs> one string, right? Which was the bottom the bottom E or the top E, the, the highest E. You know, ding, yeah, the very, top E. Yeah, the top E. And yeah. we used to play Hallowed Be Thy Name, the beginning of Hallowed Be Thy Name by Iron Maiden, because it's the only thing you could play on the top E. Ding, 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 dingy, ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding. Uh, and that didn't last very long. And then I bought a bass. I bought a bass guitar, and I was in a band called Sick to Death. Um, and we called it, <laughs> which was which was actually we we actually shortened it to STD, which was a lovely name. Um, and uh, and we we had songs such as Cast Out, which was uh, I can still remember the lyrics. The the, the chorus was Cast Out of Your Kingdom, Violate My Freedom. Um, wasn't very good. Uh, and then I eventually, <laughs> and we used to practice in this little youth club and I was, must have been about 18. I used to practice in this youth club. And then one day this other lad started coming along with a bass guitar and I was like, Hmm, am I being kicked out here? Am I being kicked out of the band? Uh, and I was eventually kicked out of the band and they went nowhere. So up yours. Um, and then <laughs> my, to the, the clinic. Yeah. I lost, I lost two weeks my, later. Yeah, exactly. For the results. <laughs> Uh, and then I joined a band, uh, a band called uh, Victoria's Desire. Um, uh, I'll wait for you to get that one. Um, and uh, no, I didn't. Uh, and then that was that. And then I ended up working for the council. So happy days. Um, yeah. So, so Dave, you were saying um, about are we, are we, you know, what are we doing now, and are we happy? So, Dave, are you happy with what you're doing now? Considering you wanted to be a policeman. Or a marine oh biologist. yeah, totally. Because I mean, when my aunt told me there's no money in 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 being an academic, um, I I set my stall out to do something completely different. And forty three years later, I'm still doing it, and I love it. I get to choose where I live, who I work with, what I do. Uh, so yeah, I, I 
I went and worked in a bank for four years, did my banking exams and treated that as my university course. Uh, and I would spend my lunch hours reverse engineering the bank statements of the people with the most money in their accounts to work out, well, how do you make lots of money? Uh, and that was quite an eye opener. So four years later, I left the bank and set out to do what these people were doing, safe in the knowledge that I don't think for one moment they're any brighter than I am. So surely I can emulate them. Uh, and and it, strategically, it worked out quite nicely. Thank you very much for asking. Excellent. So you're happy. Are, are you happy? Oh, yeah, Sam? totally. Are you happy, Sam? Me? Well, no, I, I still wish I, w- I had become a um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, to be honest. But um... <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you have been? Raphael. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pizza was it the pizza one, wasn't it? Yeah, but I think we were all pizza, but yeah, he in particular was <laughs> was pizza. Yeah, yeah. But their house, their ho- the housing didn't look that nice, to be fair. So, but no, yeah, I, I, I am happy. Well, I, um, after the band clearly didn't didn't work out, I went back to university again and retrained, did a second degree, did a PhD, and um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm happy now, and I'm now in a the situation where I can live up here in the Highlands and have you know, have worked remotely as well, which is is good. Because initially when I was doing my PhD, if I'd stayed doing this, the same lab work I was doing, I'd basically be tied to Oxford, Cambridge, Bristol or London because I would have to be in a university and what I the sorts of research I was doing was only, you know, happening in those universities. So, um, okay. yeah, as much as I loved Bristol, um, I was less keen on, on Oxford, if I'm honest, when I, when I was there. But... I'm, I've now got myself to the stage with a job I now have where I can live wherever I want. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm happy. Yeah, very happy. It's amazing how smart you are, really. What are you doing here? <laughs> Me? I'm not smart. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're too smart for us. Come on. Seriously. Uh, I, I'm good at pulling the wool over people's ears. Or eyes. See, I'm not smart. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I take it back. You're you're well suited to being here. <laughs> what about you, Owen? Are you happy doing what you're doing? Yeah, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed my job without going into all the personal details. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, I I have a great time. I still have probably there's a bit of fire in me that wants to make like you know something with creative. Because obviously you can probably see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind here, I'm I'm a very keen musician, jazz, jazz musician mostly, or just sort of any sorts really. But I would love to do something with with landscape photography, but it's just sort of setting realistic expectations, isn't it? And sometimes actually you become unhappier trying to strive for too much. Maybe with like with wanting to do the photography, you actually become happier when you just sort of accept that it's a, a hobby or just something that you do because you love it. And obviously with the young family, it's, it's just trying to be realistic, isn't it? And yeah, no, but I'm, I'm very happy. Very happy. I can't wait till he's old enough till I can take him out with me. Yeah. I'll live my life through him. <laughs> hmm. Puts a different priority on life, doesn't it? Owen, when you've got them little ones there. It, yes. It makes yes, your priorities, you know, it, it, it takes your priorities and turns them very much on what, what, how you can do to make sure their life's going to be a lot better than the one you had potentially. Does it? Exactly. And <laughs> mm. so I pull his legs off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jamie, you bastard. <laughs> now that was you, Gary. Come on. I just I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I cut, I cut that bit out ages ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's important, isn't it, to find the time. And I've, I've started going mm. out more recently again started making a few videos again and it has, it's been purely because of the enjoyment for it yeah rather than actually yeah. trying to do but there's there's still something inside me that i've got like a, a I've, i'm a creative person so it's it's good but i do get to be creative in my job just in different ways yeah like to, you know, designing and things yeah, yeah okay. i drive my wife mad because i have to make sure things don't break and fail over i have to have you know plan a plan b plan B, plan C, plan D. You know, I have to have lots of different hmm. plans going on. Yeah, drive her mad. 
<laughs> what about you, Jamie? You happy? I'm all. I don't happy mean like now. I mean just in general. I don't mean not at, in this moment. What? Well, no, not happy now because you're always trying to uh, find ways to make me unhappy. But at the moment in my, my career, I'm I'm happy enough. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. at the, the, the latter stages of my career, as you guys probably know. So uh, today's question, um, am I happy? You know, yeah, I am. I think I'm lucky, if I'm totally honest. I think I've been lucky over my career. I've I've sort of fell into not so much jobs, but career paths through just the way that, that the companies I've worked for have evolved. I've done a lot of movement from job to job through the business just acquiring another business and you move to another one because you get acquired by that new company you move over to them and you know i'm lucky enough to to be in a good job it pays good money and and yeah i'm happy doing what i'm doing um it it, it was a career path that I, again i think i probably stumbled into i you know when i was living back at home with i was the only child as well living back at home on the farm with mum and dad, clearly, you know, I could have had a, have had a career path just carried on from where dad left off and, you know, run the farm. But knowing how much bloody hard work that was for little monetary gain, that wasn't really something I was going to be that interested in. And, you know, my, my parents never pushed me to do that. <clears throat> so I took, took the option to go to college and do a sort of business diploma, a BTEC in just business studies to get myself into an office, to get myself out of out of the, uh, the the you know working on the land and into the office and started to do some work with I think it was Anglian Water was one of the first jobs I had in the water board just sort of an office job handling rateable values of properties um, but it was it was something then that led on to working at um, one of the insurance companies at Peterborough Pearl that you know Gary and that's where oh, I yeah. met the lovely oh, yeah. the lovely Mrs Overland we uh, both met each other there. And at that point, I got outsourced to a, a company that was looking after the, the the print management. So effectively, anything that that we did as a as an insurance company that was printed matter, it was acquired by somebody else. So I literally transferred over, in and started my career in in the sort of the print world. Really, and when I say the print world, it's you know anything, posters, flyers, leaflets, anything like that. And my job still remains now to control the multi million budgets of brands that manage their marketing material um so that's what i do today but that's just evolved over many years of different organizations that do the same job so yeah it's it's interesting it's it links in a little bit i guess to my interest in photography because there's a link in terms of you know we were talking about on the chat today about color management and things like that there's there's things that, that oh um, what a chat that was it. as well what a chat I was, was riveted really... by that, honestly. It's <laughs> like, so please let us talk about colour management and monitors tonight. Unfortunately, Daz isn't here. Um, sorry, <laughs> carry on. No, no, that was it. So, yeah, to answer your question, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that I've reached the point in my career where hopefully, fingers crossed, I can retire enough um, in the couple of years, two or three years' time and, and, you know, continue to enjoy the rest of my life without the stress of, uh, of work. So, yeah, I'm happy enough. Are you going to fill your time? That's the important thing. Well, That's of course, thing. the idea would be going out and taking more and more pictures and, uh, and videos, yeah. but you know, the reality probably isn't doesn't paint it that way. But yeah, we'll we'll wait and see when that time comes. I'm sure I'll, I'll find plenty to do. Okay. Well, me, I'm really unhappy. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. No, I'm all right. I'm actually quite happy, really. But you know. I, I, do you know my life is 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 a life of wasted opportunity when it comes to work it really is i never i never never did never took the opportunities i had and never chased any opportunities and just drifted from job to job i worked in burger shops and co i worked in a co-op well i was a lot younger i worked in a co-op but i've worked in offices and i've worked in finance and i've worked in computers and i've worked in databases and I've worked in software support and I've just never really done anything. And I think, you know, a, a bit of a bit of a I did look round at when I was about 35 and thought, if I'd have bothered my ass when I was 20, I could be getting paid really well now and be in a really good job. But you know, I'm happy. So, you know, I stopped I don't know, maybe people don't know, but I stopped working 2012 to look after Beth and um and I'm happy. I'm happy with my life. I'm, I, you know, we don't have a lot of money and we've never had a lot of money, you know, contrary to what people think when they go on about, you get a new car in three years, piss off. Um, <laughs> you know who you are. Um, 
Um, oh, sorry, did I mention his name? Sorry, we'll cut that bit out. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy enough. Yeah, we don't have loads of money, and we, you know, a lot of the things that other people get to do, I don't get to do. But then I get to spend a lot of time being myself and not having to worry about getting up to go to work. So, you know, uh, and I can just sit sit and be creative and and you know do what I want when I want. So it's all right. Thanks very much. Thanks for asking, Dave. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Um, I've got a question here from Lee Pelling. Hello, Lee. Uh, Hello, I like Lee. Lee. I like Lee. I like hey, Lee. Lee, get yeah. out with your, give your camera more often. We want to see some more videos from you. Yes, please. Um, yeah. Uh, he says, I have a question for you. If your camera could talk, what would it complain to you about the most and why? Uh, uh, let's start with Jamie because he's looking perplexed, so... <laughs> It's my normal facial <laughs> expression. Uh, the obvious one for me is, well, is, is going to be, um, why the hell am I stuck in this bloody bag all the time? And why don't you get me out and put me on your tripod and actually make use of me? <laughs> because I don't uh, get it out as often as I should do. Who are misses? Hang camera. Um, say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's the obvious one, but... I, well, I don't know. That's a tough one. I guess the other one is probably going to be, did you not know I could do this? <laughs> did you not yes. know that if you, if you pressed this button on my left hand side, you could do this or, you know, because there's so much to I don't know, most modern day cameras these days, isn't it? That most of us don't really explore. And I must admit that, you know, I, I've said before, I'm, I don't care really what brand of camera I've had. I've had Canon, I've had Sony, and now I've got Nikon. I never really fully explore the menus properly. I just make sure it does what I want it to do and I can start to take pictures quickly without having to worry too much about fitting with all the buttons. But I'm sure there's a lot in there that it can do that I don't use. So, yeah, it would probably be just sort of nudging me to say, oh, you've just taken that picture, but I could have taken it much better if you'd have used that button there. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think that's that would that be my that would be what my camera is telling me. The first thing though would definitely be you just I'm, it's dark in here. Let me out. <laughs> <laughs> my I think mine would say, can you please remember to change my settings when you're going to take the next photo because I'm always stuck in shutter priority at ISO eight thousand and that doesn't really work <laughs> when I'm trying to take a shot of a woodland, <laughs> or it might say please take me to the beach. I miss the beach. Or it might say, can you stop spilling your McDonald's on me? <laughs> can you treat me a bit better? Maybe it might say that as well. Yeah. That was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Sam. Well, mine would probably be very similar to Jamie's. It would probably the first thing it would say over time is, don't you realize I can record 8k video? Or, um, <laughs> Don't you realise how better the image stabilisation if would be if you actually bought an RF lens to go on me rather than kept using all those EF lenses and you don't even use the 5D Mark III anymore anyway, so why do you use, keep sticking all these old lenses on me? Um, so those are probably the two things that it would say. The other thing it would probably say is, oh, I could have been a portrait photographer's camera and then I would never have to keep going outside in the <laughs> rain and the cold. <laughs> And I might have got to see something nice. Yeah. And actually, the, the latest thing it would say to me is, hang on a second, why are you using an Olympus OM-135 millimeter film camera over there and you're using me as a four grand spot meter? <laughs> yeah, be all jealous. <laughs> yeah. Owen. I think of a little funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> well, you're in good, you're in good company. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we're we're sort of in three a.m. conversation mode now, though, aren't we? So, um, um, I I don't know. Since when I stopped making YouTube videos, I think my camera would have actually been very happy with me because you get into that mindset because you're trying to make videos and you want every photo to be worthy of talking about and stuff. So I, when I stopped doing videos for for almost two years or something, it was, it was like, I, I let it, I set it free. And I think it would have been thanking me because I was taking so many more images 
like some of them just complete absolute rubbish but i was exploring more and taking more risks whereas when i was making the videos i didn't want to take those risks because i guess i'd set myself like a a bar where i didn't want to fall below it or didn't want to you know you there's like a I guess actually it leads on to another question you had about earlier about should you worry if people don't like the image? It was some, something something along those lines, wasn't it? You, you didn't want, I didn't want to share images that were risky and then waste a lot of time filming around it. Because obviously, you know, guys know when you make videos and it takes a lot of effort to to construct the story around it. So I think mine would have been thanking me to, to for setting it free to say, come on, let's just go and take as many, many photographs as, as we can. I think that's do, probably do you worry, what Do you worry about say. that? Do you, do you worry about perception like when the, the, i mean we can ask this question afterwards actually let's hold on to that one because it's quite an yeah, interesting yeah. question so yeah. let's go to dave and and then we'll come back because i think this is quite a good question to ask so dave yeah. what about you what would your camera say to you well i suppose say, continue- bye bye yeah. oh i've got another one. Oh, hello hello dave and then that one goes bye and then it's like oh hi dave and well, then- uh, hang on a minute they, they've all been there for quite some time i mean you know it's slightly unfair it's lenses they'd be saying i've just formed a relationship with this lens <laughs> you've taken three images and now it's gone back to mpb <laughs> i tend to use it as a sort of long-term rental facility but picking up from what sam said i suppose mine would say could we do some more boudoir and glamour please <laughs> and i'd have to agree with it um would of you course, shoot that, Dave? Would I you can't ever shoot that seriously. Would you? Ever you mean, shoot would that? I ever? Okay. <laughs> I, I still do. It's do just that it doesn't go on my YouTube channel, does it? Anyway, I don't. I don't believe you, Dave. I don't believe you. You're going to need to prove it. Okay, I'll send you something through later. <laughs> um, <laughs> selfies. But <laughs> yeah, I look great in frillies. Yeah, not, not, self, not selfies, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Then. No, I don't do any of that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I, I suppose I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not sure what it would say. I, it might say, uh, "Don't you know I've got auto? I know better than you." And I'd be going, "No, you bloody don't." So, you know, that's about it. So I can come up with a short notice. It's all right. Well, I hope that's concisely answered your your question, Lee. You know, I hope we've we've we, you know we've, we've given it a good three minutes there of of real real you know real bashing out the answers there. Um, anyway, um, going back to the other one, so I'll be really interested to know this. So, are you? I, I mean, I know we we all have a level. We all have sort of like a a level that we would go. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not showing that photo. But are you really conscious, Owen? I'll ask you first. Are you really conscious then about what you show people? Are you, you know, are you not scared, but are you reluctant to show people stuff that you think is below par? And why, if you are? Yeah. It's it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because if I say yes and then when Darren reviews my images like he done for you and tells me they're all shit. And it's I've really got a lovely breakfast, though. I've got a lovely breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, I, <laughs> I think it's, it's kind of... Do, do you know, really... sorry, sorry, Owen, do you know the worst yeah, yeah, thing? Yeah. I paid for the breakfast. <laughs> I paid for his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> that day. To be fair, he you bought me one the week doing. before or a couple of weeks before. So anyway, go on, sorry, carry on. <laughs> um, I guess it's it's more around the so when when you're making the videos, obviously you're trying to tell a story as poorly as I do anyway. In fact, I've got so lazy at it now, but I actually enjoy it more. It suits my style more now because I want to try and take more photos. Hmm. But it's trying to build the story around it is whether you want to commit the effort to it. And a lot of times when you're on location, I've I've found from ex- from experience before some images that you think are absolutely incredible when you get them back and edit them and things after you've given them a few days, because I used to work like a, a couple of weeks ahead. So right. I used to have two weeks or so without looking at from taking the images to looking at the images. So you can kind of detach yourself, which I think is quite, quite important, isn't it? To actually understanding if an image is actually any good. 
you just yeah. you've taken away that emotional attachment so some of the images that i thought were fantastic and i'd build this whole little story around and think they're incredible two weeks later i'd look at them to edit and i think oh my god shocking what <laughs> now i've got to watch myself saying oh my god this is amazing this is amazing mm. this is amazing and actually i genuinely think it's a pile of shite whereas <laughs> other images where i haven't taken them and i thought they were shit or I, or i have taken them but i thought they were dreadful i actually like them so removing that i don't know how much sense i'm making here but removing the video aspect of it just allowed me to follow my instinct more yeah. And just be a photographer. Yeah. And then I could only share the images. I could, But again, on the flip side, because I wasn't making the videos and I didn't have that backlog, it was really hard to then emotionally detach myself from the images because I'd get home and want to edit them straight away. Mm. And then I'm not get out, getting out as often, so I'd want to get home, edit the photos quickly. So it's, I don't know, I'm, what, I'm, uh, my yeah. mind's a bit boggled. I haven't got a clear, concise point, but I think it's, yeah, it's 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 difficult. It's a difficult one. I would, I would like to set a bar, and I am conscious that if I share work that I don't think is good, but I have a video, it's less it's less important because you have a video around it. You have the story, and people can understand the conditions. But if okay. you're just sharing photography, yeah. then I think the bar is higher. Well, that that's exactly what I was going to say. I think yeah. that if you if it's a video. I think that you you can you can easily share stuff that's substandard because you can say, I know this isn't great and here's the reason why it isn't great and here's the reason why it didn't work. Whereas if you're just sharing your images on social media, if you put in something that you think is substandard, other people might think that you're thinking that's really good. And then and yeah. then their their perception of your photography goes, Oh, look at that rubbish that he's put out there. Because you can't, there's no emotion or there's no explanation around it to say, okay, so this isn't the best shot, but here's why I took it. Whereas when you're doing a video, you can say here is, and I think that a lot of people appreciate that. In my experience, a lot of people appreciate that honesty. And, you know, I'd rather be an honest photographer and say that sometimes things don't work on video then I would be someone who's like, you know, I hate these people who like where they go out and everything is amazing. Oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, my God, it's amazing. Oh, my God. I found a parking space. It's amazing. Let's jump up and down about the parking space. Oh, I'm going to take this yeah. photo. I can't stand that. So I'd much rather be honest about it and, and say sometimes you go out and like the video I just, the video I literally just did, I just, I, I put four pictures in and none of them are particularly good. They're all, Oh, it saves me having to watch it then. Uh, no, no. Yeah, but Dave, it was the message. The message was what was important. Right? But I put five pictures in and none of them were particularly any good. But then I said at the beginning that I wasn't about, I wasn't going out to take photos, essentially. I was going out to, to as an excuse to talk on a camera. But if I'd put those five photos on X, people would go, what the f is that? What, what, what is this? What is this rubbish? You know? And uh, but there's no there's nothing around it there's no context, so but I do think it's fine to put in substandard photos as long as it tells the story. But I get what you're saying about spending mm -hmm. like twenty minutes on on an image and talking all. I've done that so many times, but you guys have talking all around it and I'll oh, pick this composition because of this and you get it home and you're like oh my god, I can't <laughs> yeah, I've got to put that out. Yeah, <laughs> that's, oh, no, forget that. I'd, I'd rather just ditch that whole bit and not bother with it. Yeah. Well, I think what about the rest of you? What do you think? Well, Dave, what? Uh, sorry, Sam, go on. What about you? Oh, well, I was going to say, I think that's, that's part of the key is that sort of mentality where you feel you have to put it out because you've put a video, you've, you've videoed it. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't think that's really the, the case. Um, you, know, you don't have to put it out. Um, but at the same time, I think I, I can definitely relate to an awful lot of what you were just, just saying, Owen, because I've been through all of that. Um, as well and, and you know in, in in my mind when i'm going out i have um i guess i kind of think of it as i have a standard which is okay for youtube it's a kind of mental standard for images and it's yeah, sort of that's, that's Im fair comment. images which are okay for youtube won't make it onto instagram or i won't do anything else with them but they're fine as padder in in a youtube video um 
and I, I, I it, it, in an ideal, like even in my most favorite YouTube videos, you know, I might only have one or two images which I'm happy about, and the rest will be in there because we tell the story. Um, and you know, some of them might be okay images, but they're not necessarily they're images which are fine for the video. But I won't necessarily do anything else with. They're not going to be keepers. They're not going to go on the website, and I'm probably not going to share them on on um, social media. But um, I I think sometimes also if you if you've put a lot of effort into making a a video and filming a particular photograph sometimes you become artificially too attached to the idea of you have to put that video out and you have to put that image out when you don't. But sometimes a substandard image can lend itself quite nicely to the narrative of a video. So that's why I'd put those images in. Um, and actually it's, it can be quite useful. I think sometimes to go back, even, even if in the video you're talking about how amazing this photo is going to be and how happy you are with it. Um, I've, I, I don't know if I've, I've I may have done it myself. I can't really remember, but certainly I've seen quite a few YouTubers. Um, Alex Nail is, is is the first one which springs to mind, who will go through their images with quite heavy critique and say this image doesn't work because this bold is in the wrong place and this line's leading out. Um, so I think that that maybe that's something that I I should do a bit more of every now and again is just separate to the actual video at the end of it, have a little bit of a self critique of some of some of the images and say. You know, this you've, one doesn't work in got hindsight. That emotional detachment, haven't you? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Don't do that too much, though, because you'll sound like an ass. <clears throat> Not you. I'm just saying, people who do that too much. If you t if you do that, like like that's it. quite right. And no, but if you go, oh, this bold is in the wrong place, and this line's leading out. Of it, I do think it? it's important, though, to to detach yourself from. To understand whether you like a photo, sorry to jump in again because I appreciate it. No, you're fine. Jim, the, from, that's one of the benefits from YouTube that I found was the fact that it really made you think about the image. And I do agree with, with what Sam's saying. There's like a YouTube threshold and then a photography threshold. But it really made you think about whether you wanted to invest time in that image. But also, I, yeah from not making videos and just going out taking doing photography it was far freer i felt far freer to just experiment and not have to worry about it so yeah it was yes this is it's a funny one but i i am con i think i think i everyone would be lying if they said they're not conscious of what people think about their work yeah because it's a bit of you isn't it it's a piece of your art so you mm -hmm. you if you shared something and I mean, you have to look at my Twitter feed. I, I, I <laughs> get maybe like one, one or two hearts on it, a, a photos, but I, I take it, you know, it, it, it's, you just share because you enjoy the images. So it's, it's important to do it because it makes you happy. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's the key. Dave, what about you, mate? Uh, Jamie, what about you, mate? Uh, Dave, what about you, mate? <laughs> Invested. <laughs> I, I think we, we we might be slightly coming at it a bit differently. I think it's reasonable, and my, in my experience talking to people that do YouTube, you kind of start out doing it for yourself, and it's just f entirely for yourself, friends and family, whatever. And then you slip into this, oh, I've got to put one a week out and got to pad out the videos. Um, and I've sort of come out the other side of that is I'm back to I couldn't care less. It's I'm doing it for myself if I put a video out or I don't put a video out in very much the same way that pretty much every Saturday and Sunday morning I take the dog out for a walk and I never go without a camera. And I fire the shutter off maybe 10, 15 times and there's, a potential for maybe one image to find its way onto social media and the rest get deleted. Um, and I think that certainly from my perspective, in terms of in, uh, videoing stuff, I, I'm at that same sort of thing. I might make three hours of video and five minutes of it might be worth using and the rest just gets deleted. I don't care. I don't care if I spent time setting up the shots and you know, the B-roll and all that bollocks, because at the end of the day, I'm kind of doing it for myself. And if I 
take a shot that I like, and I'm saying all this having not put a video out for quite a while. Um, but going back to prior to my recent troubles, and I will get back to it, when I put something out and say, hey, this is here's me making a video, it's kind of it's pleasing myself it's yeah i'd like to remember this in years to come I, and i'm not trying to teach anybody how to take a picture i just want to remind myself of a pleasant time behind a camera behind a tripod oh, absolutely. and so i think it depends where you're at in terms of your youtube channel also if, if you don't come out the other side of feeding the algorithm and and you know if you are i don't know a, a, a tom a, a, a Henry Turner, uh, uh, James Popsis, if you're somebody that's doing it because it's part of your fiscal structure, then it's completely different and, and it wouldn't apply to any of us. We're just hobbyists. And I think that if you if you treat your videos in exactly the same way as you treat your images, you won't get hung up on it. You'll just go, okay, well, I haven't got enough material to put a video out for four weeks so what i'm not feeding an algorithm here they can piss off yeah i i don't care i'm not interested in it you know all i want is something that the people that i know and love are going to go oh, a lovely nice video and i might look at it again in three years time and that's it there's no other motivation beyond that and so i kind of don't really care I know it sounds terribly blasé, but I just don't. And it's quite freeing yeah, yeah, in much the same way as Owen talks about yeah. just doing photography. I approach video in the same vein now. And I have been through the, you know, the, the mill of, oh, you've got to crank a video out. And I was conscious of really yeah, piss poor there. photography. Um, and I think when you get to the point where you just stop caring, it, it's very freeing. Mm. Yeah, and actually, Dad, I think you've hit the nail on the head from how I'm approaching my videos now as well. Doing it because I enjoy it and because it's for me, and because I want to do it, not because, like, yeah. say, you're not trying to churn one out and doing sub, you know, substandard work just because you're churning stuff out. Mm. But it's, it's interesting. So, if you say you say you film multiple hours, is it because? Is it because you purely don't like the work, you won't put it in, you'll cut it out, or because you're wondering if it's below your threshold? Do, do, do you know of what people think? That, so is it is it basically your it's your own standard, isn't it? Basically, yeah, like I think so. Standard, I, yeah. I think if I if I look at it and think, oh, that's not bad, that stands up, then it'll make the cut. And just as as I say, with with a sort of one in fifteen twenty shutter fires being worth developing in terms of raw files, the ratio is about the same in terms of the amount of video that might see the light of day. Um, and and I, you know, I kind of have some very specific. You know, it's like you've got a, a young kid, I've got a young grandchild, and I sort of think, well, five ten years down the road, maybe they'll be watching my stuff. I'd like them to see some yeah. bits and bobs. Um, Not the that, pub cross, though, Dave. Don't show them the pub cross. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't admit to this rubbish. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I tried to <laughs> to not be here, but I got my arm twisted. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> Just how it is, Jamie. Well, I'm so glad that I let Dave go before me because I'm just going to repeat everything that he very eloquently. <laughs> stated really i've had a very similar journey in terms of you know you go through that phase where you need to to feed that algorithm and, and put videos out every week feel pressure because your subscribers are thinking where's your next video i've not seen you here for a while and think oh, i've got to get out there and take some pictures and i've gone past that now and, and i must admit I guess a little bit because I've, it was fear of repetition. You know, I was always going there, and I still do go down on Fen a lot, as you guys know, and it's no. go to the same place. No, you don't. I do, and there you go. You see, you've just your, your expression was exactly why I've not put as many out because you know people oh, are so just blaming me get... now. You blaming me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, of course not, mate. Of course not. But uh, I, it got to a point where I just I don't I don't going to just force videos out for the sake of it and. I must admit, I I did go out several times, recorded B-roll, started to record a video, and then either I didn't get a shot I was happy with or I, or I didn't take a shot at all, and therefore the videos never saw the light of day. Uh, and, and I will admit that, 
you know, from a lot of the rubbish that I used to produce to some of the stuff I'm producing now, I'll probably set my bar to the point where I don't want to share anything that I'm not happy with uh, and that I don't feel is even on YouTube, whether that's social media, YouTube, whatever, just anything that goes from my laptop to the, to, to the, you know, the outdoor world, I just wouldn't want to do it unless I'm happy with it. Um, so, and I think that's, why I'm probably not doing as many videos now as I used to, because I'm a lot more fussy in terms of what I send out there. Plus the fact that, you know, I would much, I much more enjoy spending time out with the camera and with mates to be fair, when we go out together and enjoy the experience of being out there with the camera rather than having to always worry about, well, I've got to do some B roll here and B roll that. Mm -hmm. Um, having said all that, your video this week is thinking, shit, now he's put a video out. Now I need to go out and do one now. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what you've got to remember, Jamie, is I'll put out any old tap, mate. Any old photos will do for me. My bar is so low. Yeah, but it's it, like literally but as you say, it was the story that mattered. So, you know, yeah. and that's what it was. Yeah. Plus the fact that, oh, as, as, as Aaron, Aaron knows, I've got uh, I've got the uh, the Pocket Three that's never even seen the light of day yet. So I do need to get out yeah. and you start to use that. So. That's that's really interesting, though, Jamie. So you're treating your YouTube channel more like you treat would treat your photography. So if you haven't got some like a standard of work you want to share, you haven't got a YouTube threshold and a photography threshold. You've almost got just the photography threshold. Just the threshold. Yeah. Is that right? It's whether it yeah. goes on YouTube or whether yeah. it goes on social media. It's the yeah. same to me. It's putting my work out there. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's, it's you at the end of the day, isn't mm. it? Mm. I mean, yeah. I. I'd, I'd, I'd sort of, sorry to cut in, Gary. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say. Oh, no, fine. Just, just go for it. You, you sort of have. I, I find I've, I've got a, I've got, I forgot. I've actually forgotten what I was going to say, but I was just interrupting you. Sorry. <laughs> so you literally just jumped in for no reason whatsoever, just to annoy me. <laughs> Unbelievable. If ever Gary said anything and didn't mean it, that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, Sam. It's fine. Honestly, no. What were you going to say, Sam? Gary, just, anyway, just sorry, jump in. No trouble. <laughs> I don't mind me. I, I was, you know, I just, I just run and edit the f***ing podcast. Now. <laughs> it wouldn't be a podcast if Gary didn't get arsy or yeah. something, yeah, would it? What, no. What, what I was going to say was is that we've been talking for an hour and three quarters. So, oh, it feels uh, like it's, it. It's probably time to wrap it up, but. Honestly, Sam, if you do have something you want to say, jump in now before we wrap it up. I generally, I've just had a moment of my brain is just the brain cells have just disappeared, and I've completely forgot. I was I had a really interesting point to make too. Someone pulled the legs off your brain, did they? Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> I feel like I'm just getting going. I've three beers and two rums in now. I feel like I'm just getting going. Oh, you're just getting started, and we're all, yeah, we're all going to go. <laughs> Well, you can do you can do a little monologue if you want. We'll all shut. We'll all switch off, and you can just like talk for an hour or to yourself, and we'll whack it in at the end. We can call it like Owen's self-flagellation or whatever. You know? <laughs> all right, so I've learned that word from Dave. By the way, yeah. it's not um, self-flagellation. It's flagellation. You don't hit yourself. You hit somebody else. Can't you do? Oh, I'd like to hit myself sometimes. You can do. Yeah. yeah if you Shall anyway, I? anyway, <laughs> enough of this. Enough of this. It's going down a road that we don't need to go down. Um, thanks very much for watching this week. Um, thank you, Owen, uh, for coming on. It's really good to have you on, and hopefully, we'll get Absolutely. you back on again at some point. Um, I'm coming um, to Scotland with you now. I'm, I'm yeah. in. Mm, yeah. hey, brilliant. In. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I tell you what, I'm I'm well up for that. So uh, I'm sure I'm sure if we can maybe tie it in with when uh, when Adam's here as well. And we can all go up and we get free workshop from Adam and Stuart, uh, but don't tell them. Um, you know, I mean, you guys don't need it, but I do. Please, please, Adam, help me. Um, but um, yeah, well, that's next month, now. isn't it? And they said he was here for the photography show. That's next month. He's here for the photography show. Yeah, I, well, it's going to take me about six months to save up. Um, uh, oh, thanks, buttons down there, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, only joking. Anyway, um, thanks no, very much isn't. for watching. No, I'm not. Thanks. No, I am. I am. But it is there. It's literally just, <laughs> just down there. It says thanks like that. Um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks, Owen, for coming on. Uh, and we'll see you at the photography show, right? And we'll hopefully see you again at some point on the podcast as well, because it's been good having you on. Um, 
we know Stu's not here next week and Adam's not here next week, uh, but Dad should be back next week. And who knows, we might have a different guest on. Um, in fact, I think we do, don't we? We got can't, can't say who it is, but I think we've got someone lined up, haven't we? Have we? Do we? Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, have we? I didn't know that. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I believe hey, he's okay. lined up for, lined up for next week. So, yeah. uh, but I'll dub that bit out because just in case it doesn't turn up. Um, mm. But anyway, thanks so, so much for watching. Um, what else have I got to say? Nothing. I think we're done. Aren't just we? goodbye. Dynamite outro. Yes, yes goodbye. Mm. Yes, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, I've just remembered what that was, but I was yeah. going to say now. <laughs> oh, yeah, bastard. <laughs>